So the last section of lecture is going to focus on chordates. The phylum chordata. Chordates include several groups, one of which contains hum humans. Key features include a notochord, a dorsal nerve cord, pharyngeal slits, and a postnatal tail. Several features are unique to the chordates. Vertebrates have additional characteristics. So here you can see the notochord, the dorsal nerve cord, pharyngeal slits, and a postnatal tail. Chordates include invertebrate and vertebrate animals. And again, these are the four characteristics that at some point during the life cycle of this chordate, it's going to have. A notochord, so in many chordates, this develops into the backbone. Dorsal hollow nerve cord, in many chordates, this develops into the spinal cord. Pharyngeal pouches or slits, and the postnatal tail. Tunicates and lancelets are invertebrates that resemble ancestral chordates. Tunicates have a tunic covering a sac-like body, and lancelets have elongated bodies with no heart. Tunicate larvae are free-swimming. Adults are sessile. Lancets are filter feeds or filter feed with their tails buried in the sediment. So here's an example or some of the anatomical features of tunicates and lancelets. You don't need to worry about the anatomy of these two. Hagfishes and lampreys have a cranium. So the development of the cranium kind of differentiated these guys. Lampreys were the first chordates with vertebrae, which protected the spinal cord. The sticky slime hagfishes secrete help them slide their bodies out of danger, so they have slime protection. And then lampreys have a cartilage skeleton. Here you can see a picture of a hagfish and a lamprey. Jaws, lung precursors, and a bony skeleton first appeared in the fishes. Cartilaginous fish have a cartilage skeleton and paired fins. Chondriichthyes is what we call cartilaginous fish. And bony fish have a swim bladder and paired fins. Osteichthyes are what we call bony fish. So here's the diversity of different types of fish. So here's um, the cartilaginous fish, a stingray or a shark, and the bony fish, the um, lung fish, and so forth. The basic anatomy of a bony fish includes vertebrae, a brain, stomach, intestine that leads down to the anus, a kind of primitive kidney type thing here, so a kidney, urinary bladder, which will excrete wastes, and then a gonad, which will produce the eggs or sperm cells. Liver, heart, gills, and then this swim bladder. The swim bladder is important in maintaining buoyancy or its floatability. The swim bladder regulates the depth of water that the fish is going to be in. As the swim bladder fills up with air, the fish is going to rise toward the surface of the water. As it decreases the air con uh, quantity inside of it, so deflates, the fish is going to float farther down in the water. Then there's this lateral line. The lateral line on the fish can sense vibrations in the water, so that's a major sensory organ. Instead of being able to hear things, the fish can feel things or feel the vibration of other fish swimming nearby or somebody coming to harm the fish. So here's that lateral line. 
fish's eyes, so fish don't have eyelids, you can see that by the eye. In order to focus, they have this lens in the center of the eye. The lens will actually move forward or backward depending on what the fish is looking at. Fish's eyes are very sensitive to light, so it's important not to expose fish to a lot of light. So when fish get put in fish tanks, in pet stores and that type of stuff, and they get that bright light shined in their eyes, that's really harmful to the fish. And then they have people tapping on the side of the tank that's stimulating this lateral line organ and that causes a lot of stress to the fish. So it's not great how we keep fish in uh, as pets. Lobed fins were the precursors to limbs that defined the tetrapods. Lungfish have lungs that are homologous to those of tetrapods. Lungs and limbs facilitated amphibians move to land. Their eggs must remain moist, so these tetrapods retain a strong link to water. So key features of amphibians is that they respire by lungs, gills, and they have moist skin. So the gills usually disappear during their um, kind of larval stage, if you want to call it that, in their uh, juvenile stage. When they're tied to water, when they come to land, then they breathe more so with the um, lungs that they have. So amphibians include frogs and toads, cassilians, salamanders. Basic anatomy of a frog. So you got the esophagus, the trachea, which leads to a lung. They have a heart, liver gallbladder, pancreas, stomach, small intestine leads to large intestine. They have a cloaca at the end, they have a urinary bladder, which is attached to the kidney. And then they have fat bodies. The fat bodies allow them energy storage. And they have a spleen, the brain, the vertebrae, and so forth. The amnion allows reptiles and mammals to breed in dry habitats. So a reptile's amniotic egg has a leathery or hard outer layer surrounding a yolk that nourishes the developing embryo. Many similar structures surround a mammal's embryo. So if we look at here, the placenta is kind of like this yolk. And we actually call the um, initial implantation and development of this baby's placenta a yolk. Then this yolk leads to the center kind of through this umbilicus of the developing embryo, kind of like we have an umbilical cord that leads to our abdomen. They have a head region, a tail region, and early on in development, humans do have a tail, and they have this amniotic sac that surrounds the developing embryo, similar to what you see inside of an egg. Amniotes include mammals, birds, and non-avian reptiles. Strong evidence suggests that birds are a type of reptile closely related to dinosaurs. Some books even go as far as to call them reptiles, and they classify them in with rep reptiles. But we're not going to for our purposes. So reptiles including snakes, lizards, and like I said, um, this textbook kind of lumps them all in together, but birds lay amniotic eggs and thrive on dry land. So, reptiles have scales, birds have feathers. Here's the diversity, so we have turtles, lizards, snakes, alligators, and then birds are kind of separate. So we have a difference here. These guys are cold-blooded. They depend on their environment in order to regulate their body temperature. These, this one, is warm-blooded. They regulate their own body temperature by eating food. The basic anatomy of a bird, so they've got feathers, the feathers has the quill and the vein, the vein allows that bird to fly. Their skeleton contains less bones than, human, than a human and the bones are less dense to allow for flight. But pretty much all of the same bones are there, they just are fused together. 
Mammals are amniotes with hair and milk secreting mammary glands. Key features of mammals include mammary glands and hair. There is a wide diversity of mammals. There are some mammals that lay eggs, like the platypus and echidna. Those are called monotremes. There are some mammals where the, their young complete their development in a pouch, like the kangaroo and opossum. Those are known as marsupials. And then, like humans, the young complete development in the uterus. Those are called placental mammals. Humans, dolphins, and bats are placental mammals.